Well, friends, with the dynamic compression plating principle, some of you had asked whether the compression can be given more than 2 mm or not because conventionally the maximum compression that has been described it is 2 mm with the help of two eccentric screws. But with few tricks, you can go for more compression also. So, in this video, I will be showing you how you can get more compression with our dynamic compression plating principle. So, here you see we have tried to reduce the fracture. On the far end, we have placed one centric screw and we are going to work on this area for compression. So this is the position of plate we want when the fracture gets perfectly compressed. Suppose the fracture is distracted like this, like we have 5 mm distracted fracture, just a hypothetical situation. We have distracted it to 5 mm. So we will be trying to compress this fracture to minimal gap by using the dynamic compression plating principle. So first of all, you keep the fracture aligned, you place your bone clamps around the fracture side so that the plate and the alignment of the fracture remains stable. We have placed the eccentric drill bit first away from the fracture side and drill the hole for the first screw. Now here since our purpose is to gain compression first, we are not going to put bicortical screws at the first instance. We will be using unicortical screws and will be putting bicortical screws later on when the compression has been fully achieved. I'll show you in the coming steps. So we have drilled a unicortical hole in the eccentric mode that means away from the fixed side or you can say close to the metallic edge which is away from the fixed side. Again you see the gap is still 5 mm but the moment we place the first eccentric screw we are still confirming that the gap is still 5 mm and the moment we get the head engaged inside the plate hole that means the slanted area of the DCP hole there is going to be migration of the plate. You see the moment head engages inside the oblique slanted hole of the DCP there is migration of the plate. See again this is the moment and it brings the compression. So we are amazing again. So the gap is now around slightly less than 4 mm. So principle wise there should be compression of 1 mm but it can vary slightly because sometimes the oblique screw trajectory gives you more compression that is slightly more than 1 mm. So here also that has happened because of slightly oblique trajectory of the screw the gap has reduced to slightly more than 1 mm. That's now the second eccentric screw. Again in the eccentric position goes to the edge of the plate hole away from the factor site. So here it has been done. Now the, you can see the hole it is close to the edge. Now we are placing the screw. Before getting the head engaged we have to slightly loosen the first eccentric screw. The gap is still around 3 point something and we are slightly loosening the first eccentric screw. We have loosened it so that the head is disengaged from the hole and after that we are going to tighten the second eccentric screw. Gap is still 3 point something and when we tighten the second eccentric screw you see you see the head is getting engaged and the moment it is getting engaged like here the plate movement can be seen you see the plate is moving. So we have further reduced the fracture side gap and you see the screw which was earlier eccentric has now migrated towards the far edge of the plate hole earlier it was somewhere here now it has migrated till here now here if you are satisfied with this compression then you can simply tighten this screw but if you want more compression then you will need to remove this screw first and that was the purpose of unicortical hole because since we are going to need more compression we are going to need more compression these holes should not compromise the bone so unicortical holes for the purpose of getting compression is something that i want so that you place the bicortical screws only once you are sure that the compression is fully adequate. So you see the compression now it is slightly more than 2 mm. The gap is now slightly more than 2 mm because of the extra compression that we got from the second screw. It should also be 1 mm but again slight variation can occur. So earlier first screw gave us the compression of slightly more than 1 mm and second screw gave us the compression of around 1 mm. So we are now left with two point something gap at the fracture site. And tightening of this screw will not affect the gap at all. You see the gap will remain a two point something here as well. But if we want more compression we have to remove this screw. So we have removed this screw. Now again another eccentric screw in the third hole. So here 
we are drilling again on the eccentric edge again a unicortical hole done then the screw loosening the previous eccentric screw before tightening this and see now we are tightening and with tightening again you see the plate movement happening you see the fracture is getting further compressed so with tightening we are getting further compression now this gap is almost one millimeter you see let's measure it it's almost one millimeter now at this point if you are satisfied with the reduction you can simply tighten this screw the gap won't change and if you want more compression we have to remove this unicortical screw again now since only one millimeter of gap is remaining we just need one more eccentric screw here and that screw can be placed in bicortical mode we need not to place unicortical screw here because this screw is going to be definitive as we have achieved the required compression so here we are putting the screw and here it's going and we are losing the previous eccentric screw at this point you have to ensure that some clamp has been placed here so that overall alignment of the bone remains satisfactory the purpose of these screws is only to gain compression you have to ensure that the plate and the fracture are well aligned so here you see we are tightening the screw again and at this point the fracture ends are getting snugly fitted with each other now after this you see the holes of the previous screws have migrated to visibly different positions here what you can do if the screw hole is well inside the plate slot then you can put the screw and tighten it to the best position if the hole is not over the plate slot then what you can do you can simply place another bicortical hole here and put the screw or you can simply keep this hole vacant and the plate length should be adequate so here the gap was five millimeter and we were assuming that one millimeter compression will be achieved by one eccentric screw so we chose five hole on the opposite side of the fracture so we chose the 10 hole plate so if we want more compression the plate length has to be longer and once the compression has been achieved all the screws can be placed in bicortical mode the screw was bicortical the, this screw can be changed to bicortical here also it can be converted to bicortical we can place a screw in the best fitting position here we will have to drill another hole that will be away from the pre-existing hole and this hole is going to be bicortical so this was a trick by which you can gain maximum compression whatever length you want only thing you have to do is to choose a longer plate so i hope the queries of some viewers regarding the extra compression if they want has been resolved with this video if you have any doubt you can just put those in comments thank you